everybody, welcome back to my channel. <sighs> Today's video is a pretty sad one. I've already been crying from the bit that I've just recorded. <sighs> and I know that I can't sing, but I've just been singing Supermarket Flowers by Ed Sheeran. That song gets me every single time, and even more so today, because today um, we're just going to have a little vlog um, about what today's day is and what it means to me. And I'm going to sound all snotty because I've just been crying. And you'll probably see some more tears on the way, um, but I wanted to try and get a little bit off my chest to feel a little bit better. Today is February the 4th. February the 4th is the day that my mum died. And sometimes I can get through it and be okay. And sometimes I can't. And today is one of those days where I can't. It, it's hit me like a bus. Um, God. It, basically, 4th of February is also World Cancer Day and my mum died of cancer. So, um, it's just silly little things for the week previous to today. There's been... It's just silly little things popping up, but it all affects me and it, it messes with my head. Dates going out on bread and milk and things for, for Feb. Things going off at work, appointments for some of the people that we support for, for Feb. People mentioning for, for Feb. Just not to do with mum, just... Just in general conversation, it still upsets me no matter what. And then I went to Morrison's to do my food shopping and there's an absolute huge poster. Will cancer day for Feb. And I lost it in the supermarket and I burst into tears. Um, but I've bought a, a plant. She liked red. Her uh, favourite lip colour was red. Oh, I need to put some more water in these actually because they're for now. Please don't mess everywhere <laughs> like my uh, egg yolks. Um, but I've got some other red roses, um, but I do need to uh, put some more water in because it's drank it all. But I will do that after I've done this video. Um, so, yeah, it's a really tough one for me today. And. I just wanted to get a few things off my chest. And one of the things I do remember about my mum, because she died when I was eight, so it is a little bit difficult sometimes to remember things, is how she always had a red lipstick on, even when she was poor. It's alright, I'm rocking because I'm on my knees to try and get me in the frame a little bit better. Um, but it's hurt my knees, so I might have to move in a minute. My mum... Um, I always wore red lipstick, even when she was dying. Even uh, in a wheelchair, even when she had no hair on. And she always had a red lipstick on. It was her trademark, if you like. Um, so that's one of the things that stands out the most, which is why I've bought a red roses. Oh, one thing is, I will ask. I know it's probably not the most entertaining thing to see a girl sing an Ed Sheeran song and, and cry nearly all the way through it and talk about a dead mum but I'm afraid I don't care and I'm just gonna go with it I'm really not interested and if I get a thumb down for this video then you really are quite soulless and heartless and um, I think you need to do some thinking and I hope that it never happens to you I mean obviously will one day your parents go before you but Oh, in my case, the, well, they did anyway, but um, she did anyway, like, but uh, way too soon. And it's a horrible feeling 
Now it's a horrible feeling, A, because I was very, very close to my mum. My mum was there for me, no matter what. If um, I had a bad dream, my mum got out of bed. If I was poorly, my mum was by my side all the time and never left my side. She used to stroke my hair, play with my hair, she used to make everything all better. And to have that person who meant so much to you ripped away is awful. So if I get thumbs down for this video, then the person doing that thumbs down is absolutely soulless, heartless. And quite simply, and I don't care what you think of me for saying this, but you're evil. So if I see thumbs down on this video, I know the person doing it has no soul. And no heart. And it's just pure evil. Because I do tend to get thumbs down on my videos. I appreciate my content isn't for any, everyone. But you're not even putting why. You're too cowardly to put why. You're not even putting in the comments. I don't like your video because X, Y and Z. I can't improve if you don't tell me. And you can do it in a nice way. There is such thing as constructive criticism. And yet I, can, I probably will take it the wrong way. But at least I can try and take on board a few things that's been said. I mean, some people have come to me privately that know me and said, I like your Ackerman review video, but I can't hear you properly over the music. I appreciate that. And I've not done any music in any of my videos. Uh, and there was the whole thing, obviously, with the copyright claim that was a fake copyright claim. But even nonetheless, it was still, I have anxiety. I, I don't want that. I, do, I, don't, I can't deal with it. So, no, I don't have music on, but I don't have music on for a very good reason. I don't want any copyright right, click to get something that I think is copyright free and end up with a copyright claim. Um, so, yeah, that's why all mine don't have them in anymore. And um, because I, obviously I was faffing about with the app that I've got that I use to edit my videos. I know they're not brilliantly edited, they're basically edited, but I like the way that they're edited and that should be the all that counts. And I do hope that my subscribers do like the way that I edit my videos. Um, but um, most of it is pretty much, it's, it's basically, it is raw footage, but I had my little, oh wobble me thing i had my little comment things in the uh, like um i very sneakily put um I'm sm I'm smiling because i was a bit cheeky on the actual game of bendy and the ink machine um you went where these bits of blank wall actually <laughs> was a bit naughty and i tried to get it as close as i could to the font of what's on the wall so i can't get it dripping but the, the font that's in the app i actually uh I get it as near as I possibly can for the app. And, right, please subscribe and things like that. And It's my way of doing little subliminal messages. I'm not a professional. It's just my little thing. Um, so I do try very hard. And I appreciate people who do thumbs up. But if you thumbs down, at least have the decency to tell me why, please. Anyway, I've rambled off the subject a little bit. And... Um, I was talking about my mum. So, I also remember that my mum... Um, sorry, I'm, I'm looking a bit through this photo album uh, that I had made from years ago. This isn't the original photo album itself, but that one, through moving and things, got broke. So I bought a new one for it. Um, oh, I think I had this given, actually, which is um, it's fine. It's still the same photos in the same order that my nan originally made. My nan is my mum's mum. Um, so I'm going to go for a few of these photos while I'm talking to you, if that's okay. Um, I'm not going to show you some of the personal ones uh, from like when my mum was really little. But yeah, my mum had this blue dressing gown and I'm really, I, I don't know what it is, but whenever she hugged me and that, I felt, I, I, I felt safe and, and secure and things when she hugged me anyway. But there was something about that blue dressing gown, it was soft. And it was warm and cosy and I'd, just when she hugged me in it, it was just um, just a special memory for me. Oh, I'm sitting off again. 
so I'm trying to think what I could show you uh, without it being that being too young or uh, you know inappropriate or anything like that. I don't want to do anything to damage my mum's memory. Uh, not that these photos would, but some are like baby photos and a lot of parents take photos of them naked and things like that. So I don't want to do that. Uh, so this is a photo of my and Paula sat in front, my nan sat in the middle, and my mum sat at the back. I quite like that photo, I don't know if you can see it very well. I'm going to put the light thing on, see if that makes a difference. Oh, it does a bit. I'm going to pull that bit in there. So yeah, that's my mum, my nan and my auntie Paula, they're a little bit younger. And this is my mum and my dad uh, when they were younger. I like seeing things like this. Oops, turn it round. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty crappy day and at some point today when my nan's got to her appointment I'm going to go see my nan. Um, just to make myself feel better because it's... And my husband's gone to his first day of his new job as well. I'm pretty nervous about that too. So, my mum and dad on the wedding day. Oops. Try and focus. I'm going to hide behind it. Oh, it focused better now I've hidden. Which was so bonny. Well, I've got one here for you. This is my dad when I was born. Well, my dad and me when I was born. I was like a bit of a red beetroot there. Hmm. Hmm. I really, I really like this photo. This is uh, me, my mum, and dad. Let me hide behind that bit so you can see me better. I love that photo. He looks so happy. He's just so cruel that you have to die. I'm off again. I'm not sorry. I'd like to say I'm sorry, but I'm not. I'm not ashamed of my tears. But it's just not fair. It's really not fair. It's just so cruel because it takes away things that we love. <laughs> Here's a letter. I'm not going to read you the letter, but this is a letter that I once wrote for my mum. And I made up an address, obviously, bear in mind. When my mum died, I was eight. So I might have been eight or nine or something like that when I wrote this. So it says, Miss, Mrs. J. Gascoigne, one fluffy heaven cloud, golden gate light in heaven. <laughs> and she wrote me a letter when she went into hospital. Dear Jenny, I will miss you a lot. Lots of love. Lots of love and kisses, mummy. Oh, it's just not fair at all. I've probably 
we said that a thousand times. I think that was in London. A bit older than that one. I'm not sure how old though. That's backwards now. Oh, I'm all snotty. I like that photo as well. Mum and Dad. Memory stuff, and I have videos of my mum. That's a nice one. So I do still see her, but I think what's pretty cruel, even though I enjoy them, I'm gonna have to move a minute. One sec. Ah! And that's how you had pain to your misery. Sit on your feet for a bit. Well. So I can't remember fully what I was saying. <sighs> yeah, I have. I was saying that I have dreams about her. Um, I dream about her a lot. I dream that even like at this at my age now, she's living in Bradbury Street, which is where I was. How we were when before she died. Um. Yeah, we lived in uh, Bradbury Street, so I sometimes dream that she's in Bradbury Street. Um, the sad part, of, the thing that bugs me is, is that if she was still here, would she still be with my dad? I think she probably would be, and that's no disrespect to my stepmom now um, at all. But obviously, she hadn't died. I don't see why they would have split up. Um, but for in order for it, like, I know it's not right to bring people back from the dead, but like I say, through some, I don't know, m magic of some sort, she came back, she would now be on her own. Um, so it's sad because, obviously, my dad's with, oh God. Sorry, I can see some snot on the end of my nose. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that's really gross. Um, so, yeah, because he's with my stepmom, she'd be on her own. But it, the dream is like that she is on her own and he's with Jane, my stepmom, and she, like, she, she'll text me to say, can I come to yours? And where I live, it ain't oh, not, not that far, so she knocks on the door. As I obviously, of course you can. She knocks on the door where I live now and, come, and comes in, and then, it, and then I wake up and realise it's not real. It's just a dream. <laughs> and it's cruel. It's kind until I wake up, because it's a nice feeling to know that, to think that she's back. And then to check my phone... And there's no text from my mum. And I just think, well, <laughs> I like it until I wake up and realise she's not here. And then, she, then obviously, I've got the reality of that she's not here and she didn't really text me. But they always they say that I don't know what people believe, but some people say that if you get a if you dream about somebody that's that's died, they're trying to tell you that, that they're here. Uh, and don't be that they're here for you. So I suppose in a way it's my mum's way of saying I'm here for you, darling. <laughs> I just wish she really was here. <laughs> because it's really hard. I mean, like I 
as I get through my day to day life and then sometimes it hits me and I really miss it and I'd do anything for just one last hug because as an adult I think I've never needed my mum more not really any more photos in this album now, just the chill, the kids want the song, but I'm not going to leave that. Um, um, I forgot what I was going to say now. Um, I can't think. But yeah, um, what the chuff is that? Oh, ever since I got my hair cut by someone else, she really messed that up big time. I hate it. Rambling on into something else now. Yeah. <sighs> What's these ones that's falling out at the back? Hmm. <sighs> yeah. Sorry, I'm just. Well, I'll show that one. These are like falling out at the back. Um. They don't. This. This. The. Either too big or whatever. So I'll just show that one. My mum and dad, I don't know who the middle woman is, but obviously they met on holiday. I really like that dress my mum's wearing. I could never pull something off like that. And uh, my first portrait. <laughs> I don't know if you can, I want to hide so that it try and show it better. Um, I don't really know what else to say now. Just that I really miss her and think about her a lot. Oh, that's what I was saying. I was saying that... Hang on, let me wriggle. I was saying that... Um, some days I can get by and then some days it just hits me. Um, and I miss her all the time. I dream about her, but she's not here. Um... And I've said it a thousand times on this video, I think it's it's pretty cruel. So, my last thoughts for this video is just to say that spend as much time with your loved ones as possible. Oh, I can't get this clip to go on. Spend as much time with your loved ones as possible because you never know what tomorrow brings if you've argued if you've said something you shouldn't have said put it right because like I said if you've said something you shouldn't have said to a loved one and then the next day they're not here. You can't put that right. And because you can't put that right, you'll regret it your entire life. Now I'm not saying that when I... I mean, I was only eight when my mum died, so I'm not saying I said something I shouldn't have said before she passed. Because pretty much as she was dying, I missed a lot of school because I was... I would be took out of school to go and visit my mum as much as possible before she died. And the last time I saw her was in hospital. And she hugged me and said goodbye like she always does. And I never saw her again. So... You need to spend as much time with your loved ones as possible and everybody argues but don't leave it on an argument 
try and put it right and if you've fallen out with a member mem with a me fam family member and now unless they've done something tremendously horrible in the past I urge you to put it right whether it's your fault or not and sit it through and talk it through I mean last year I fell out with my dad I'm not going to go into it and I didn't know if he was going to be coming to my wedding and I did turn him a text telling him when it was I didn't know what to put so I just put the date, the time, the place of the wedding and of the after um, a lot went off obviously otherwise I wouldn't have fallen out and when he turned up we both cried um, he did turn up to my wedding but if I'd have had no parents there at all it would just been awful because I'd already cried that morning my auntie Polly, I remember it my auntie Polly did my makeup and I was all ready to go and I said auntie Polly, I need you because I wanted my mum. <laughs> because I had to get married without my mum being there. <laughs> and it was horrible. But I mean, no, it weren't horrible. I, I obviously, I had a brilliant day, a fantastic day. But my mum weren't there. And I want to be there. And it weren't nice not having her there because she should have been <laughs> just like a lot of other things that she won't see. <laughs> I'm just hoping there is some sort of afterlife and everything that I've been told is true <laughs> from like that. Sometimes the psychic will give me messages from my mum and it does sound legit because they know things that only my mum would know or I would know and vice versa. And I am hoping, really, really hoping that she does, she does, is near me because it comforts me. I mean, the strange thing about, um... Oh, my nose. The strange thing oh, about um, my wedding day is that it snowed and it snowed and it snowed and it snowed. There was black ice from, I think, December all the way up to, fir to March the 4th. And I was panicking. Oh, hang on, I've got a text. Oh, it's from my husband who started his new job today. Uh, just letting me know when he finishes. Um, oh, my God, God. Oh, now. hell. Um, yeah, basically, I say that when I forget what I've said. What does it say? I was worried that, like, my dad, if my dad was coming, he wouldn't be able to get down because of the snow. I was worried that people wouldn't make it to the wedding because of the snow and black ice and things like that. And I was just like, well, this is marvellous. March the 5th, 2018, the sun came out and melted all the snow. Everybody who said there was going to be there was there. Um, nobody missed it. And uh, my mum's cousin Carrie turned around to me at the after do and said, your mum ordered this. She, she put a, an order in place for some sunshine for your special day. And do you know what? A lot of people were like, aren't you freezing? Aren't you freezing? I mean, my dress was about five layers anyway so I was sweating I was really really warm anyway but I weren't cold and I do 
sorry, I thought someone was coming to the door then. I do think, um, I do feel the same way. Everybody said the same thing. My mum ordered that son and made it a really, really nice day for us both. So I do feel like she was there on my wedding day, which is brilliant. So I haven't really got anything else to say now. I've got a lot off my chest. I've done a hell of a lot of crying. I still need to, <laughs> I'm recording this, I still haven't finished my stupid other part two video. I'm saying stupid because when you see part two, um, whether you see this before or whether you see this after, who knows, it's my channel, um, whether you see this. Um, before part two or after part two, basically, if this goes up before, you'll know that there's from me telling you now, <sighs> nearly everything in that video went wrong. I have the biggest fit and tantrum ever. And then, because everything goes wrong. So, basically without spoiling it, is as everything went wrong and I was rushing for work, I recorded some of it and not finished it. So even part two is not really part two because it's part two and then now today I'm technically going to finish part, technical what should be part three. Um... And I'm hoping the rest of it's not a nightmare. So anyway, I would say I hope you enjoyed today's video. But I'm not sure how I feel about that if you did. Because you've seen a woman cry about a mum that died when she was 8 years old. And it's 20 years today since she died. Um, so I'm not sure how I'd feel about it if you like this video. But um, I suppose you could like it in the sense that I'm bringing some, making something a bit quite personal, talking about things that are quite personal and that opens up to who Jen Duffy is um, and what she's about and a little bit more about me and some people like things like that. So if you like things like that please give this video a thumbs up and um, I'll see you soon. Bye. To the supermarket flowers from the windowsill To the day old tea down the cup Those open soda albums my few had made Memories of a life that's been loved To be well soon cards and stuffed animals Throw the old ginger beard down the sink Dad always told me, don't you cry when you're down. But there's a tear every time that I blink. No army pieces, it's tearing me up. But I know that this oak is a heart that's been loved. So I'll sing hallelujah. You were an angel in the shape of my mum. You uh, fell down, you be there holding me up. Spread your wings as you go. When God took you back, he said, Hallelujah, you're home. Pillows, the bed, check the chairs up. Yeah, I can't sleep. <laughs> it's an emotion. Sad on my cheek. Tear from the side of my face. <laughs> See the world as you did.
but I know love is a life that's been lived, so I'll sing hallelujah. You are an angel in the shape of my mom. You be there holding me up, spread your wings as you go. When God takes you back, he'll sing hallelujah, your home. in the shape of my mom you've got to see the person I have become spread your wings as you go that God take you back he'll sing hallelujah your home